I traveled somewhere. I actually took myself, my camera, and my wife, and we left the state of New Jersey and went to the West Coast, one of our favorite areas to visit, Washington State. This Pacific Northwest Adventure photography trip involved going to Whidbey Island, Fidalgo Island, lots of boat trips, lots of kayaking, lots of whale watching, and even a quick ferry ride out to the Olympic Peninsula for a one-day photo shoot. Hello there, my name is Chris and welcome to KGS Photo. If you're new to the channel, I'm a photographer and we're going to talk about photography. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back. This video is going to go over my quickish trip to Washington State. I'm going to show you some of the stuff I was able to shoot, have some video of our hikes and our adventures out there, and uh, it should be a good time. We love going to the Pacific Northwest. I mean, what's not to like? Giant forests, giant mountains, uh, brutal seashores, cliff sides. It makes for amazing photo content and scenery, especially if you're a landscape photographer like me. Before I get into the video and the photos from this little photography trip, I just want to remind everybody, when you're out there in the world taking pictures, especially if you're not close to home and you're doing travel photography, make sure your batteries, you have a lot of batteries, they're fully charged, or at least you have an adapter, and you can charge them in the car while you're driving to your different locations, and make sure your, uh, stand, your SD cards or whatever type of cards you use in your camera are empty, or at least you have extras, and make sure you have all your gear, and make sure everything's clean, your filters, Ugh, just make sure everything's ready to go, because it stinks if you show up to a spot and you don't have every, everything with you, you left it in the car, you left it in the hotel or the house you rented, just be ready to roll with everything you got and, uh, and have fun. We left from New Jersey and flew to Seattle. From Seattle, we made our way north, stopping in Everett to visit the Funko headquarters, if you know anything about that. And then we made it all the way up and over onto the islands, passing through Fidalgo Island and then ultimately down to Whidbey Island, which was our first stop for the first few nights. While down in Whidbey Island, we made it to a couple different locations and I grabbed some interesting shots. We visited, uh, the first big photo area we shot at was Muirkirk Gardens. And uh, let's take a look at some of those photos we got from the gardens. In Muirkirk, tons and tons and tons of flowers and uh, a woodland trail, some uh, small ponds and lakes, and it's right on one of the bays. So lots of flower photography to be found in Muirkirk Gardens, even a little bee butt sticking out of some of the flowers. The big tall trees, the Pacific Northwest forest are so impressive compared to the small stuff we have on the East Coast, specifically New Jersey for me. After hiking around Muirkirk Gardens, we were able to go over to the west side of the island and we visited Ebby's Landing, the uh, Ebby's Landing National Historic section, and then walked, hiked out to the cliffs on Ebby's Landing Bluffs. The Ebby's Landing area is set up high on cliff sides, so you got great views in all directions, tons of rolling hills, farmland. The one spot that I was looking forward to getting to was the trail that takes you from Ebby's Landing to Ebby Landing Bluffs, and this is the reason why. The photos you can get on this trail are pretty spectacular. This is the historical Ebby's Landing homestead, signage for the Ridge Trail, out to the cliffs, the bluffs, and when it comes to interesting landscape photography, this area, Ebby's Landing and the bluffs, the cliffs, the beach, it's got it all. Your leading lines, beautiful nature. We had a pretty overcast day, so no real sunset to speak of while we were out there. Made our way out onto the cliffs, the bluffs over top of the beach. We hiked along the bluff trail for a little bit, but it did get pretty hot out that way and we wanted to go for dinner. So only a limited amount of time of photos taken while we were hiking the bluffs. And then we did have a little bit of a sunset, some sunset color over the bay that our house w that we rented was, uh, was perched up on the cliffs. Some leading lines and depth of field with the stairs going down to our little private beach. Sunset colors, hazy sunset colors on the bay. All passengers must disembark the vessel. Day two of our Washington trip, we took the ferry from Whidbey Island, and we took that out to 
Olympic National Park. While out in the Olympic Park area, we stopped by some of the lavender farms. Unfortunately, they weren't blooming yet. This was late May, early June. So the one thing that was blooming, wildflowers and poppies. Not finding any lavender, we made our way up to Hurricane Ridge and the uh, difference in temperature from the bottom of the mountain to the top was uh, pretty drastic. There was still a lot of snow on the trails, so a lot of the hiking that we normally do up around Hurricane Ridge was kind of shortened due to the fact that we had to march through snow and we weren't really prepared for that. But it's always worth a visit to get to the top of that mountain. While shooting from the uh, parking lot area of Hurricane Ridge, this little family of deer came strolling by. I got some snapshots of these deer before they got spooked. These deer added a little something to the landscape. Not just hills and snow and trees, but they got a little animal action, a little nature action going on there in the foreground. The road that normally gets you out to the Hurricane Ridge trailhead was closed because of snow and ice on the roadway, so we had to first hike up and down the roadway to get to the actual hiking location, and then once we got there, it was pretty deep with snow. We left Hurricane Ridge slowly, stopping at the different pullovers to get different angles and views to shoot. This is one of those views from the road coming down from the uh, top, top parking lot. On this trip, we actually got to visit a new location that we hadn't been to before. This is Madison Falls, I believe it is, and it's not too far from Crescent Lake. In, this is also an Olympic National Park, and it's a very quick hike. Um, very refreshing on a hot day. We had just come out of the mountains, so it was cold, then hot, then cold. Now it's a little more refreshing down in the waterfalls, but an amazing waterfall that you can get right up next to if you wanted to, if you had uh, water shoes or took your shoes off using a slow shutter to uh, blend the waterfall water, give it a nice ribbon feel. The one big issue that was kind of technical, shooting the waterfall, it's in its own deep gorge, and it was high, high sunlight, and probably two, three o'clock in the afternoon. So the top of the falls, side of the falls, very bright, and down in the gorge where I was shooting from, very dark. So this is where bracketing and some photo merging, HDR merging, came handy so that I could get highlights and I can bring up those shadows to show everything in the riverbed or the, the stream that the waterfall is falling into. I just threw on a dark neutral density filter, made the scene nice and dim, kept that shutter open for a pretty long time and took different group bracketing shot groups of uh, three and five, I believe, and then merged them on uh, in Lightroom, and uh, I think they came out pretty nice. It was still hard to fight that very hot spot of the sun on the top of the falls. But well, we drove away from Olympic, another hour and a half to get back to Port Townsend to wait for the ferry, uh, grab dinner, and then unfortunately couldn't stay over there overnight or any later for sunset in the park or any kind of star work. So took the ferry back across the waterway, back to Whidbey Island, back to our rental house, and get ready for another day of uh, putzing around, taking pictures. This photo location was Fort Casey, I believe it is. Uh, old World War I into two fort on southern Whidbey, southwestern Whidbey Island. Lots of cool architecture to shoot, lots of different vantage points you could shoot from. You could be on top of the fort, inside the fort, below the fort. A lot of things, the interesting angles and things to shoot. I love working with the uh, creepy shadows and the creepy lighting in all the different angles and corridors of this fort when we were exploring around. So found some nifty looking things to work with, make it look like, a, like it was a horror, a horror scene. I was able to get down to the waterfront in front of the fort and uh, hike a little bit down to the beach. Lots of wildflowers and high grasses on the dunes in front of the fortress. Left the fort uh, and then tried to grab a little bit of a sunset down on the beach now below the Ebby 
cliffs that we were on the day before, two days before. So these are the cliff base and the beach. Definitely big ankle breaking rocks on this beach. Now halfway through our Washington trip and we've moved from southern Whidbey Island in a house to a boathouse right on the waterway down the road from Deception Pass State Park. Sunrise from our boathouse was pretty spectacular. Not just looking for landscapes, but also looking for fine details, nautical knickknacks, trying to get something different. Great calm mornings on the water. The boathouse was a prime location to be able to get great shots of the bay, the marinas, and a quick drive over to Deception Park, Deception Pass State Park. Got up early enough on one of the days to get into Deception Pass during sunrise. So we had sunrise coming through the forest, coming down the, uh, the channel under the bridge, and we had tons of fog. So it definitely gave for a very cool, moody look. And fog, I mean, you can try to predict it, but you never know what's gonna happen. Especially out here on the islands, they might have low fog early and late in the day, and you just hope that it sticks around long enough so that the sunrise or sunset can show some color and some light beams coming through it. Love getting this angle of deception past the uh, main bridge section over the channel. It's so many different angles you can get. You can walk up and down the beach. While we were up there, or up there, while we were on the beach taking these pictures, we had some uh, seals out in the, uh, the waterway giving us dirty looks. Don't know if we were on the beach that they wanted to be on, but they were floating by. I love using the big chunky rocks as foreground subjects, something interest, something to show some more interest than just a bridge and landscape, having that early morning sunshine gleaming off of them. It uh, really worked out nice. Of course, you'll find Carnes anywhere you go when it comes to hiking, especially in the Pacific Northwest. So how to get these little Carnes sitting on a log down by the pass. From the bridge, we went out to the waterfront, away from the bridge, and uh, tons of coastal fog coming off of the water. Really making things interesting, blocking out the trees, blocking out the hillsides and the mountains, making things a little more mysterious looking. Sunrise, sunshine, trying to burn through that heavy fog over the forest trees there. Really neat look eerie but down on the ground you could see pretty pretty good in front of you it was the longer shots landscape shots that showed more fog so besides hiking around deception pass state park and doing the jet boat tour underneath it we also were able to do some kayaking uh leaving from the park and going up along the coastline and we did get to see some seals and starfish and lots of porpoises so it was a nice relaxing trip to say the least couldn't take too many pictures from the kayak because i don't trust myself or my wife not accidentally tipping over into the water and ruining very expensive camera gear so just gopro video and gopro stills were available for that on our almost last day, but our last day on the islands before we would head back towards Seattle, we took the whale watching boat tour. We've done it one other time before and caught some pretty cool action of killer whales feeding and jumping around all excitedly. This time we saw lots of killer whales, but they were kind of lazy. We saw a lot more seals and uh, maybe even sea lions. A lot of them hanging out on different rocky outcroppings in the bay. These guys are fighting for position on buoys. I mean, if you knew there were hundreds of killer whales floating around, I would be trying to get on top of a buoy too to get away from them. We started to follow a pod of killer whales once we got back down to the southern end of Whidbey Island. And uh, we followed that family for a little bit. Got a couple nice shots, nothing amazing. They didn't fully breach that I could see, but got a, some of them cruising along, 
trying to catch up with their buddies. When we wrapped up our whale watching uh, cruise for the, it was like four hours, the weather finally broke and it finally cleared up a little bit. So we were able to go to a local park near Ana Cortez and get some scenic views in from the hilltops and mountains. Even caught a rainbow with the sunshine coming through, trying to push away all that crappy rainy weather. Found another mountain not too far uh, south of Ana Cortez and got some really nice views from up there too. A little bit of a drive, but once you get up there, the hiking is pretty easy. During this photo trip, I feel like I accomplished what I was looking for. And what I was looking for is what I'm always looking for, you know, interesting compositions, going to different locations and shooting and moving and shooting again, trying long shutter, uh, hoping for sunrises and sunsets, but I didn't get those so much and hoping for the overnight stuff and I get that so much, but it was a great trip all around. When I go on these trips and all my focus is on photography and my wife's with me and all her focus is not sitting in the car while I take pictures all day and night, you gotta mix it up. So it's always fun to go around, look for new things, find distilleries, breweries, restaurants, go on boat rides, do whatever you can to make it interesting and also get out of your comfort zone for photography. I'm mostly a landscape photographer, but we went to the old fort, went to land, we went to landscape stuff for uh, the lighthouses. We went on the boat rides for the whale watching and the eagles that I couldn't get in focus right. <laughs> so you gotta practice wherever you go and whatever you have. Thanks for watching the video. And if you've made it all the way to the end, congratulations, you win nothing, but I will ask you to subscribe, like, and ring the bell. And hopefully in the next few weeks or months or whatever, there will be more videos and we'll go into more depth on maybe some of the editing of my photos from this Washington trip. Until then, just go out there and shoot something.